What's up guys, Sparky is here and today I'm going to show you how to replace a switch on a Samsung oven. Alright guys, so first of all, ignore this soldering iron. I got, <laughs> I burned a little bit of the plastic on it and right now it's smoking. Um, but the main thing is the Samsung oven or the range, whatever you want to call it. I'm having an issue with the heating element. So what happens on this right side, when I turn on the stove top, um, it just heats up like full, like it's full potential. Like we put a pan on it, we're trying to cook something and it's getting way, way too hot. And there's an issue with the switch. So as you can see, there's different type of heating elements. This is considered a dual element because with this switch, you can either turn on the small element or the big element these back to have different knobs these are different type of switches because they're single element so today we're going to be replacing a dual element switch for this range so the very first thing we want to do with this is unplug the power so we're going to be pulling the oven out and we're going to unplug the cord because we cannot work on this while this oven is plugged in that's the most important thing unplug the range so let's go ahead and do that actually before I do that let's explain real quick what material we need so we have a dual element switch this I got on Amazon I'll link it down below in the description we're also going to be using some crimpers some needle nose pliers we're going to be using a Phillips screwdriver and we're going to be using some connectors this is a female connector I'll show you why we need that in a second um, but the most important thing is that this is rated for 600 volts to match the 600 volt rating of the wire inside the range and of course this is the switch that we're going to be replacing but let's go ahead and pull this oven out so we can unplug it before we can start opening it up so with a little bit of wiggling this oven will slide right out and uh, there's probably going to be some critters back there but I bought some uh, some foam spray to get that sealed because when I pulled it out yesterday there's a bunch of roly polies in there so we'll get that all sealed up but the main thing is we're gonna unplug the range and we want to make sure to not touch the electrical connections when we're pulling it out so we have it unplugged um, I wonder if it shows the type of model number this oven is I know this range is a Samsung I'm not sure the model number, but we'll put that down in the description below. And I didn't see a lot of videos on this type of oven because the other ones, the other ones had the buttons up here, but I couldn't find one that had the buttons down here. That's why I'm making this one. So to remove this faceplate to get access to the switch, there's going to be some screws, some Phillips screws under here. It looks like there's one, two, three, four screws. So we're going to go ahead and take out these screws. Your oven's probably not going to have this. This is like a child lock little cover that I got from Amazon. But we're going to take off the four Phillips screws so we can get access to the switch. And yes, I need to clean the oven, but we're trying to fix the stove top first. All right, so with those four screws pulled out, we'll set them to the side and, you know, double check, make sure we got it unplugged. Yep. So the way we pull this out is we grab it from the bottom, pull on it, and then it kind of slides up. It slides up and you can see there's two little notches that it hangs on. So we just pull it out and then we can go ahead and uh, let this hang a little bit. Remember, I'm having an issue with this heating element, which is this farther switch to the right. And as you can see, that it burnt up. You can see this connection burnt up. I can no longer use that connection. So I'm going to have to make a modification on getting that fixed. But don't worry. I should be able to just crimp on a new female connector. Now, I already looked at the wire, and the wire is rated for 600 volts. So that's why I made sure that I got crimps that were rated for uh, 600 volt as well. So what you can do in this situation, you could take a picture of it so you know how to replace it. So let's go ahead and do that because that's a realistic thing that you're gonna be doing. Take a quick picture, boom. We should be able to take off the switch with some screws in the front. 
this knob just slides out we got two screws that are in the front that we'll remove so we can replace the switch okay so with those pulled out now we can start pulling off these connectors see if this one even pulls out get some needle noses see if it comes out I don't even care if it breaks so yeah it broke we're gonna be replacing it anyway so what I'm gonna do I want as much wire as I can so I'm gonna cut it all the way near the front of this boom so I went ahead and cut that out but look at that so that's probably why my stovetop is staying on all the time because it's a switch malfunction so let's pull this off. We don't need that anymore. That's the old switch. Let's go ahead and get the new switch. And I'm going to just compare real quick. So um, I already made sure that this was the correct model number. But just looking at it, it's the exact same. Or I don't know if those numbers are the exact same. But I believe the part number is right there. PR0001. Wait. PR0001 12D. It's the same switch. Let me make sure everything else lines up. Same connectors, except this one. We're going to no longer use this connector. And I already did a little bit of research. This connector, it comes all pre-installed on this harness. But the whole harness costs like, I want to say it was $150 to $200. And that doesn't make sense to me if it's just a piece of plastic. So that's why we're going to use these. And it's going to work the exact same way. It's just not going to be the factory connector um, but we're going to do that to get it fixed oh i for also forgot some wire strippers so let me go ahead and get those wire strippers before i move forward all right so i got some old wire strippers that i got from the garage but all i'm going to do is strip it back far enough to get a new crimp on here and um, i already looked at the wire size this is number 16 gauge wire so we're going to use a female connector that's rated from number 16 to number 14 gauge wire so we're gonna slide that over to where all the wire strands are covered and we're gonna get this crimper and we're gonna where it says insulated we're gonna crimp it as far down as we can really squeeze it as hard as you can and that should and just tug on it and make sure that wire doesn't get pulled out but that should fix it and then this connector has a heat shrink on it so we could heat this up to get it to attach to the wire better to make it kind of waterproof or just to have a more secure connection so we'll go ahead and do that I could use a match but I'm going to use this soldering iron to kind of heat this up so I'm going to put a little heat on it and see if it starts shrinking which it should so as you can see it's starting to shrink all right so there you go it's a little bit dirty i probably should have wiped the tip before i used that but uh it's securely fastened on there let me give it a second to dry and i'll kind of clean it up a little bit Alright, so going back to the picture, we're going to copy the same way we took it out. So it was faced like this. We're going to be connecting the white one back up to it. The blue one clips in. This black one clips in. And last but not least, this one that we just took out, we're going to push it all the way in. So we're going to use the needle noses. Oh look, it got stuck a little bit right here. But we just need to push it all the way and kind of tug on. Oh, see how it came out? So I'm trying to push it in and it's kind of sliding out. So all I got to do is push these little metal tabs in just a little bit just to give it more of a snug fit. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to try to trim this a little bit. This little piece of plastic because it seems like it's 
getting in my way a little bit. Squish these metal tabs in. So we're going to push this in. Use a needle nose to push it all the way in. Now that I push those little tabs in, it's very secure. I'm trying to tug on it. It's not coming out. All these. Um, okay, that's snapped in. Let's just make sure that they're all not going to come out. So now all my connections are secure. I can go ahead and put it back. And we'll try it out. So we're going to put it back in the hole. And we're going to use the two screws that we took out at the beginning. So we just got to put it in here and line up the holes. Let's tighten it up. We're going to put this back. And then the way we reinsert it is you line up those two tabs. And with those two tabs in, you can open the oven back up. Push this all back in. And we're going to get those four screws again. And we're going to re-secure this plate. I'm done putting all the Phillips screws back in. We're going to put all this stuff to the side, all the tools, because we're going to give it a test. All right, guys, so everything's moved. We're going to go ahead and close it up. We're going to plug the oven back in, and then hopefully it works. So same thing again. When we plug this oven in, first of all, let me scoot it up. And plug the oven in, you don't want to be touching any of those electrical connections, so just push it from the back and let it kick on. All right, so just to recap this heating element, there was nothing wrong with the heating element itself because they would both glow just like normal, but it was staying on all the time. So when we would heat up our food, it would just stay on, it wouldn't even like cycle through it, just wasn't reacting normally so let's try to turn it on see if it turns on the heating element and boom i f i see it going slow too before it would just kick on right away so we know that that outer section works now we're going to try the middle section and see and there it goes very slowly it kicks on just like we need it so there you go now you don't have to buy a whole oven because you just fix the part yourself now your husband owes you something or your wife whoever your significant other they owe you for fixing this oven i hope this video was helpful for you guys if you like this type of content if it helped you out um, it would really help me out if you like it so make sure you like subscribe hit that notification bell for more sparky izzy peace